guys, I'm Karen Linde. I am 35 years old. Started LARPing when I was 14. Did my first LARP when I was 15 in 1996. It was called Shadows Over Sumatric. Skogur Over, Su over Sumatric. Uh, didn't remember the name. I had to ask um, the one that I met it with 20 years ago. I haven't spoken to him since, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's no pictures. I don't remember anything about this game other than there was a soul in a bowl that was carried into the LARP by an orc. That was it. And you will see that uh, down here there will be years and who I made it with. And in some cases I was not the only designer. Uh, in most cases I was not the only designer. And in some cases I was part of a, a designing team. Uh, that we were like more than 10 people. So I hope it will it will sort of set out. So Skuguro was so much like, it was the first one. It was not that awesome, but I was 15. That is me, uh, my friend Clara, and my little sister. That is Arumpnisse from Veronia uh, the Robert's daughter, if you know about that. Uh, she also said when she saw this picture, oh, I looked exactly like that when I was pregnant. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Not the, and I'm just gonna do some fiddling here so I can see my notes. Uh, the first big LARP I did was Lichtschem, that translates to Light of the Lanterns. It was 1999 and I was a part of the very edgy organized team Galadrim. And we wanted to do a game that wasn't your regular fantasy game, although this uh, uh, this game was very heavily influ uh, influenced by Wheel of Time, but we didn't quite see that then, maybe, but it was. But I was in charge of culture and characters, and uh, also this was a <laughs> gender uh, oppressive culture, and it was big drama and debate in Sweden on our, uh, what's it called, uh, Rollspels forum on the uh, internet. Uh, and everybody very, was very angry about this. So, let's see, I can't get this to work as I want to. Now, sorry, I'm just wasting time here. Oh, there it is. So, gender oppression and culture play. Uh, then, I was kind of done with fantasy and moved on to a much more interesting world, the reality. I was 19 and had an idea for a game that was called The, the Dinner Party, or The Dinner. Uh, that was basically uh, influenced by the Swedish author Ilmos Gadell. And we were playing sort of our parents. Um, so all the designers were, were under 22, but we played 45 year old, middle crisis, angsty, middle, <laughs> middle class, uh, people having a dinner that went to hell. Uh, <laughs> we are so cute. Uh, so that was that was fun and kind of weird in retrospect. I don't know what I would think about this game playing it now when I'm closer to the age of the characters than I was when I made the game. But I made it with uh, Erik Stormark and Charo Lander, and I come from a small city in uh, in Sweden. And this was before Facebook and the internet breakthrough, so we didn't know we didn't know what the others were doing in LARP. Uh, I hadn't been to my first Knutpunk yet, but we thought this was very edgy. And because it was not fantasy and we were like, oh, can we do that? And it turns out we could. Then I started to go to Knutpunk and realized that, oh, there is others out there who does other things. But I kind of continued on the uh, standing in a box. I was so excited. Uh, uh, we kind of, I kind of continued on the the more reality focused games about people just like you and me. A Pony's dance that is translating the mating dance um, in with the Lore Klander, and it was um, a couples th therapy LARP where uh, couples went to a retreat to get counselling for their very bad relationships. Uh, and uh, it had been done two times, 2002. There's no pictures from that run, unfortunately. 
Uh, but then uh, Yu Wang took it and made it again in 2013. So the pictures here is from that game. And the, the counselors are, I wouldn't say that they are quackers, but they are quackers. So, <laughs> so it's kind of a two-part two game where for the, the counselors it's kind of a fun, kind of brutalistic, grotesque comedy. Uh, well, and for the, the ones the couple, in couples counseling, it's more of a serious note. There is crying and tears and fighting and drinking and real drama. Uh, it worked very surprisingly well, actually, to have this, in my opinion. I cannot speak for the, the people who were there and played it, but it was like you laugh with your, with your own, your, your right ear and you, you cry with your left. Uh, which is an aesthetic that I really like, that you can find. If, if you wanted to make something truly horrible, you need to have something fun to contrast it. Um, so uh, I, think, <laughs> I think he's standing in a box because he needs to think outside it, right? <laughs> it's his wife that is there. I think she was also his sister, but they didn't know. Um, so they were not very happy. <laughs> Um, yeah, and let's see, I'm fiddling. Then uh, I started thinking about cats. And in Sweden we have a children's book called Pelle Svanslös. Do you have it in another country too? Yeah. Pelle the, the, the tailless. So we made a game that was uh, about cats that had a club that was called Club Fiddles. And we <laughs> It was basically about nothing, but it was really fun. Uh, everybody was dressed up as cats, and we made that 2002, me and Adam Rodelis and Martin Rotterschiren. And this is a game that kind of took its own life and went out on a tour without us. So the only thing that was, was that we had a website with uh, very simple characters, and like, this is the LARP. Every, uh, every player needs a tail, go and play. So this lab has been around the world. I don't know how many times it has been uh, redone, but Finn has done it, and it's been run at Knutepunkt, and in Czechia, I think. I don't know. It, it, maybe there are still runs of Tufferings out there. It was one last year in Oslo. Yeah, that's, that's super awesome. Uh, Tufferings is, I was very, I was, maybe it doesn't show, but I felt like a real serious designer, 2003. So, so, <laughs> but yeah, uh, but we started, we, as in the ones in Stockholm that I talked and did LARP with, we started to think about form and how can we expand uh, or play with the, the LARP form, also very influ influenced of course by the Knutepunkt and going to Knutepunkt as well. And we wanted to do something light and something fun, so that was the plan. Uh, okay, so more fiddling, this is... Uh, and then I made a larva by Jesus with Christopher Lim. Uh, and it was my first black box larp. I don't know if there was anything called black box in 2003, <coughs> but we made it in an actual theater black box. And the thing, when in the beginning of the, the black box era, I don't know if you remember it, but the larps were kind of long because we, we hadn't learned to shorten them yet. So uh, the Last Supper was. I think it was seven hours long for a game that today, if I made it today, would be maximum three, including workshop. And we did like a whole day of workshopping with, with I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but we were doing like movement and uh, drama techniques and stuff. But The Last Supper is kind of interesting because it was the first, we, we tried to elaborate with different spaces in the black box. So we had, we had an off-game space where you can, if you wanted to storm out, you can go there uh, and, and watch the game. We also had a, a, a Jesus place where Jesus couldn't go and talk to God. And then we had a, a little stage where you could play scenes that everybody was looking on. And then we had acts. So we tried to cram everything into this game. Uh, I think despite being too long, so there is an... Uh, an amount of time you can talk about fishing if you play fishers, uh, uh, and that 
is not seven hours. <laughs> uh, so, but it was it was interesting to to explore and see that you actually could do stuff with different spaces. And again, this was before Facebook and internet and no, no, no. So we didn't know if everyone else was doing it, but we felt extremely edgy and cool and on point. Uh, we have talked to do this again, but we need to redesign it and all the characters that is based on the apostles. Uh, the Lord was Jesus and the apostles and three acts before Jesus is uh, crucified. Uh, they are on a hard drive somewhere, so we don't know if we can re re uh, resurrect it, <laughs> uh, but it will be fun. <coughs> no! Oh my no! <laughs> okay. Then something happened between 2003 and 2007, and I don't remember why I didn't do any LARPs. I did a lot of other stuff, uh, going to school and getting my first job, and you know, this is uh, from Knutepunt. It's Saturday. I'm very hungover, I'm 22, so I'm hungover, like only 22 years old can be. Uh, so there were no LARPs then, but I think I kind of wrote four LARPs, or wrote characters for some LARPs and helped in some LARPs, but I can't remember which, maybe between Heaven and Sea and some others, but yeah, so that was that. Then Anna Westerling came to me and said, I have this idea for for uh, mixing theater and, and LARP. Do you want to join? And I said, hell yeah. Um, and that became a nice dinner with the family. And a nice dinner with the family, for you that doesn't know about it, it was a LARP that had a tagline. And the tagline was, this is not a fucking LARP. <laughs> uh, we wanted to challenge what everybody thought LARP was about. So we were like, okay, what mental techniques have we heard of? And we listed those. And then we said, okay, what are we missing in this list of mental techniques? Let's invent some more. And then we just crammed all the mental techniques into the game. So we had, a, we had a black box, not a white box, because it was white, so we call it the white box. We had uh, directors in black going around giving people directions. We had a, a psychologist that was up in a very, very small room. I was in the psychologist. I was alone a lot uh, in the first game because people forgot about me. But I was sitting in a room so people could go to the psychologist with their character and ask them. We had ghosts. Uh, uh, and uh, we had acts. And we had a monologue uh, stage that nobody used because nobody could hear anything because there were so much people. Uh, and we also had a meta hour. So uh, between, I think, 8 and 9, the whole game stopped and we went into um, the, the groups of the plays that we were playing and uh, um, just played meta scenes. And so we tried everything. And should you be in that list, the credit list? Yes. Yes, I'm sorry that I forgot you, and I got an anxiety attack, but that is Emma, she was also part of that. Um, it was madness, and we made four runs. Total madness, very fun. Uh, don't know if I would have done the same today, uh, but we were fighting a lot uh, about what we could do with this game, and I think today maybe we could have like taken away 70% of the meta techniques, uh, but we wanted to try, we wanted to, to give it a, a shot. Um, and Emma, uh, I took the list from uh, the Nordic Dark, so we should go in there and get you in there. Uh, and I'm sorry again, I think this is super important that everybody that needs to be good. Um, uh, the f uh, one thing, fun thing about uh, an ice dinner with the family, we did three Swedish run and one international run. And the international run, people were kind of skeptical. People were coming there saying, I don't want to have to do anything to do with the meta techniques. And then they drank a lot of alcohol. So it, like, I think it was double alcohol, uh, the, the, the fourth game, than it was in the, 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 four, the first three. So 
So that was our first m meet with, uh, with the international crowd. Like, <laughs> we don't want to play your game, there's not a fucking bar, and we drink all your books. She had died, and up in the house was our dad that nobody wants to take care of. And we kind of needed, the siblings needed to go somewhere to talk what we want to do about dad. So the only, they went out to the boat they, that they had uh, used when they were fishing uh, as kids to have that serious conversation. So in, when we were rowing, it was, uh, it was very, very windy and it was raining, so it, like, it was misery. We have five people in a boat, and then we had the house in the background where, like, that was the symbol of dad. It was really fun. I would love to try it again. Uh, so <laughs> I kind of got a got a taste for the the chamber drama, um, and that is what I of my own work that I've been doing designing my own have mostly been for less than fifteen people because that is when. I, I find LARPs with a hundred people amazing, but it happens something when you condense the drama to 50 people, to 10 people, to even 5 people. You get, you get uh, an intensity that you can find when you were role-playing board games, uh, uh, tabletop role-playing, like this very heavy ensemble feeling where everybody was communicating uh, in a way that you kind of get in big games but with a smaller group. So then I just removed the, the big ones. Also, making big larks, it's exhausting, and I will be talking a bit about that. Oh my god, the time goes so fast. Um, Joachim was a game that you can download and play if you're interested. It's, uh, it's about, um, I think it's 11 um, theater students that every year they meet again to reminisce about their uh, theater uh, study years when they were in acting school and the game is about Joachim but Joachim isn't there because he is the, he is the punching bag of this group um, and the game is about what happens when the punching bag goes away who will become the next punching bag uh, who will be the next victim of ridicule and uh, bullying uh, and <laughs> as what you see here is the play that they played, it's Peter Edgar, for those of you who know him, who, who was the, the first face of Joachim. The game ends that the, the class get a video from Joachim where he says, you have destroyed my life and I, I will take it. Uh, and then he starts drinking vodka and taking pills and then everything goes black. Um, so, like, these characters have to deal with the consequences of their actions. Uh, so Joachim is also this fun, it's really fun to play, but then it gets kind of horrifying. That is what's the intention. Um, and if you want to play it, come back to me and I will hook you up. There is, uh, actually it's uh, translated into English. Um, and then I went in back into fantasy gaming, much thanks to Karina Dahlberg, who made a game called Hemlighet in 2010. That was a fantasy game. that. She can talk about in her retrospect next year, maybe. Uh, and uh, Hampus Boom hooked me up and said, Hey, do you want to go to a fancy LARP? And I was like, Yeah, okay. 
uh, I was very skeptical, uh, but then I've been to the Kickstarter campaign 2011, it's been very fun. And we thought, could we do something with like weight in a fantasy game? Could we, could we get bleed from the fantasy game, like the Knutepunt Nordic Lark bleed? So I, Hampus wrote the characters, these are the Ledus up there, they are a group of very broken soldiers and I created some kind of structure to fuck everybody up and give us PTSD and war memories that we, uh, it worked quite well, it was really fun, uh, much well. Uh, <laughs> and we played these characters three times uh, in 2012 uh, and uh, it was really really fun to like take a lot of meta techniques from the Nordic Lark scene a lot of influences from Vietnam movies and and then just fuck everyone up into crying and uh, there this was me and Hampus was the instigator somehow uh, Hampus was uh, I, I made the meta structure uh, and I organized the second mini game that's called Meine Mutter um, but it was so much a collaborative process. Uh, and like everybody working together to really get some heavy bleed. <laughs> it was beautiful. Uh, also, a little sh chamber lark in a bigger lark picture. Some of the, the players also had took their characters from the big campaigns and took it into that. Sadly, we killed some of them <laughs> during the process. Sorry, but you can't make an omelette, but I'll bring it to next. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's Let's move on. Uh, 2012, my good friend Kaisa Greger, uh, was, she was uh, having her 30th birthday. So I said, let's make something fun, I will make her a game. And then I took my favorite book, The Handmaiden's Tale. But for you who haven't read it, you really should. It's about a future America where the fundamentalistic uh, Christians have taken over and enslaved all the people, but especially the women, especially the fertile women. Uh, and made them into to sex slaves, basically, but under a religious flag. And the Camerone is called the Camerone because it also took um, inspiration from the book The Camerone about people fleeing Florence in the 12th, 14th century. And the book is like they are in this house waiting for the plague to be over, and then they tell stories. They tell us 10 stories, one each day. And the Camerone is built up in the same way uh, that all the characters, there's ten characters, um, have one scene that they play with one of the other players about the past. Uh, and this LARP is set before the book, uh, right before the, the shit hits the, hits the fan in the US, when the US become the Republic of Gilead and everybody, they start, you know, executing people that have done abortions uh, or abortion doctors or people that have written uh, prof profane literature and so on. And I'm going to do it again because in April the Handmaid's Tale, the TV series, have a premiere for the 26th of April. So I'm going to put this up again, but I had to rewrite it a bit because in the first version of the game there was a mock-up president that came after Obama uh, that was called James Lerner or something. Uh, but now I just have to rewrite it because now the uh, yeah you know the reality and so on. Uh, so now this President Trump will be in this game, so the, the reality comes into my game and makes it more horrifying, and that is really really scary. Uh, but it, Jesus is a, bit, is a big theme theme, and also what what is goodness? Is goodness is there good and bad or? what is the grey zones between good and bad and what, what will you do to protect the ones you love uh, so there, there are some people waiting to get on the boat over Lake Michigan to Canada from Cleveland I think I don't remember if the, which lake it is but you know, you get the picture and they are waiting for the smugglers to give them go and while they are waiting we play also the past and what they have been through um, <laughs> Then the uh, Hampus album again uh, asked me if I wanted to do uh, a game with them in a series called Trikrona, Three Crowns. Uh, it was about Makov. We played basically ourselves in a 
Shmistorian setting. Uh, it was about it was satire and the World War Two and Nazis and we killed certain. It was great fun. Uh, there was also some controversy, but still great fun. Oh my God, what happened? Sorry, I'm just gonna speed up a bit because we're losing time. I knew this would be a challenge. Oh, uh, and then I kind of got into a forum game with some people I didn't know that well. And we started LARPing in a, in a web forum about kid teenagers trying to start a, a role playing group. We're going to play Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, and we had so much fun, so I said I will write, I will write a LARP about these kids. So I did, and it's called, it's a, a monkey that looks like you, after a, a song from a famous Swedish uh, singer. I don't know, is it called the Tag? I don't remember. Yes, so. Oh, thank you. Uh, but we are not teenagers anymore, so when I was a teenager, teenager I LARP middle aged, and when I'm middle aged, I LARP teenagers. It's weird but it happens. Mm -hmm. So I had to make up some rules how to act like a teenager and that was the monkey. Um, I'm just gonna see it for myself here. And the monkey was the mask that you wear when you're a teenager. Uh, and the monkey is the, the, the you that doesn't, that can't take things seriously. Like if I say I like you and I don't know how to ask then you say you like me, and I don't have, have to act, I can just like, make a bit away. So there were some rules uh, when you choose the monkey instead of being honest. And I'm gonna read them very short. Uh, you can always choose the monkey to hide your true feelings. Uh, you can always choose the monkey to escape from a difficult situation. The monkey always trumps honesty. Only girls can cry, and boys must choose the monkey, <laughs> um, and if somebody says it's not funny, everybody temporarily choose the monkey. And this little set of rules work beautifully. And we tried to play uh, Vampire the Masquerade, it didn't work very well but we, uh, for the players, uh, for the characters, but the, the players had a good time. And again, humor and real emotions connected. I would love to play this again. And then, yeah, nerds, role playing in LARP, teenage, monkey. Then we go into my very brief, very, very br brief travel into the, the brutalist blockbuster genre. Uh, there have been said a lot of things about the Monte Celestra. I haven't quite recovered yet. But if you want to know, buy me a beer later. Uh, <laughs> we were so many that worked on this game. One of the designers and head organizers over there. Uh, much fun, not my thing. And Martin and me, we have been debating macro and minimalism for like 20 years. So let's let's talk more about that tonight. I'm still I'm still in the mini, minimalist scale. Uh, some of it was really fun, some of it was really not fun, uh, but it was, yeah, I would never forget it, so. <laughs> then, this is the most recent thing that I've been doing and still is doing, it's called the Brighter Price, Price, Brut uh, and it was a game I made with Kellerina Dalve, and now we played it four times, once in Sweden, once in Norway, twice in Denmark, this autumn. Uh, it's not, it's the least sexy and fun art you will ever play. It's about violence and oppression and patriarchal s uh, structures driven very, very far in a, some kind of Nordic aesthetic setting. Uh, it will, people are wanting to put it up again, so maybe we'll get a run in Austria next year or maybe France. Uh, and you can, there is a website if you want to read more about the game. The whole game is up on that website. Uh, it's super rewarding to do this game. I talked about it today in a, in a talk earlier and I, uh, I was crying. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to go into this more because I don't want to cry again. Um, and we still have time. 
Hamlet in Wittebe is, I think, the game that I feel the most for. It was a letter alarm that I just made on a whim after the first Christmas. I was exhausted and kind of burned out, but uh, so I needed something to to think something other else to think about, and um, I made the, this game uh, with a lot of talented people. Some of them are in this room, where we basically made a prequel to Hamlet. That is called so Hamlet in Wittenberg is about Hamlet's time in Wittenberg before the death of his father. And every player in this game played one of the main characters in Hamlet. I played Hamlet. Uh, that is how you do it. <laughs> when you play by main, you can you can say, oh, we can do this, but only if I can be the main character. And everybody said I could. Uh, and then we basically just had a lot of male conversations and divided up in months. So I, we played September, October, November, December. And in the middle of December, the king died. Uh, and the, the, and it became a book that needs to be edited, but I would really, really love to, to print it someday. And uh, I have never been so invested in a role-playing game. I was crying. I like sat and refreshed my email to see if I got an answer from, uh, from Ophelia or from my father or from Claudius, as it's over there. Uh, I am immensely, immensely proud of this game. But it's, it's hidden on my, my Google Drive, but someday you will witness, you will see it. <laughs> uh, and uh, now we're almost done. Uh, my God. Yes. Uh, this is a very short game. It's cats again. No, it's only for four players in a living room. I made it for Frida Kozolikun's birthday. It's about the crazy cat lady that you see buying cat food that smells of cat piss. And I wanted to see, can we tell something about her life? So her cats tell a story about her life. And the players, one player play the, the lady and the other players play the cats. It was quite, kind of sweet and sad. Uh, I haven't done it again, but I'm thinking about it. Trying to redesign it a bit, but it was fun. Uh, then I got pregnant and think, thought, I will never LARP again! What I'm gonna do? I must make a LARP. And I did. It's, called, it's also in Kriksjeta, the Kriksjeta world. Uh, it's uh, set in... Uh, we worked with Neta Techniques and uh, we had like a potlatch uh, food system, so everybody brought food to the game, so it was a very chic game. Only one day uh, that dealt with the death and uh, love and you know all the important stuff and war uh, so I kind of said goodbye to, to the dark world because I was having a baby so that was why the, the, the larva is called a Vidisen as well um, it was fun and then you know life is over when you, when you have kids just for a very short while you have to step out of it for a while so this this spring uh, I made a game with the um, OBF, that is a study organization in, in Sweden. That was about this is like the driest dark I ever did. This is about uh, workers' organization uh, through the, nine, the the 20th century. So we made three games: one in 1917, one in 1967, and one in 1942 where that was organized like a circle, a study circle. So in the 1917 circle, they studied like um, uh, workers' rights. And in the, in the 1942 circles, it was uh, air strike, what is it called, Luftschutz. Um, air strike shelter? Yeah, for women, because all the men was out in, in the woods. So the women had to learn how to build bomb shelters and protect people from when the, the, the airplanes came, if they came to Sweden. And, uh, and the 97, 97 was about Vietnam. Uh, and it, we made it um, as an open event and we had like 70% of first time players. That was awesome. And hopefully it will be a book soon. And this is the last one. So I'm, I, have very, I have time for some questions if you have any. Uh, with Swedish Radio this autumn, I made a game called The, the Dinner Party. So we're kind of back where we started. 
uh, with people, middle crisis, middle <laughs> class angst, but now I'm actually in their age. And there is a podcast in six, so uh, a drama series in six parts. That's called The Dinner Party, and then I took that story and made it into a game, so you can listen to the podcast on, in Swedish, on a modern date, uh, on, uh, on, and then you can download it and play it. It's one of the most fun projects I ever did. Uh, uh, so, <coughs> if you understand Swedish, please listen to the, the podcast. It's really, really funny and really, really good. And again, humor and uh, tears. Uh, that's the most recently. So, I tried to kind of sum up my design philosophy that I didn't know that I had, but now I know it. And it's relations. I'm, I'm focusing on relations and investigating me to play, and I love to play close to home. And also, I, obviously, I like Jesus and cats, so <laughs> that's that. Um, I'm thinking of doing a, a kind of a, a vampire game that will be, I don't know, maybe commenting on the recent vampire. There's always a vampire trend. Like in society, it's always like a, a wave of vampire movies that come like this uh, with like five years uh, or something. So now I'm thinking about commenting about the, the new uh, Vampire the Masquerade rise and do my own take on it. Uh, we'll see what will happen. Uh, and if you want me anything, here's my contacts. I, oh, I made it. <laughs> um, many of you in this room I have worked with in, in some ways, and if you feel that I didn't credit you enough, please uh, hit me after and I will buy you a beer. Um, if it's someone has any questions or comments, you, we have a couple of minutes uh, to... to when you look back at your life as a game maker, what kind of Eurekas you have had? For example, you said that now that you, when you did this dance show, you understood that you had a vision and you have some, some, some way to do it. But for example, from newcomers, what would you tell them that they don't do this mistake or what kind of Eurekas? I, I think. My, I'm always interested in the relationship between the characters and between the people. Like, I want my games to be relatable, even if it's about dragons and swords. I want it to be. I want the players to be able to emphasize uh, with the, their characters and understand them, and that even in, in a world where uh, we have magic or dragons, for example, that is that is just a backdrop. The important thing is what happened between me and another person in some kind of everyday daily life. That is the minimalism that I'm quarreling with Martin about. That is what I find interesting. I have never been an epic gamer. I love this, the small things. Yeah. Yes. So, um, whenever I get to play your games, it's like my absolute favorite. So this is probably the designer I hold highest in this game. But I get to play them very little. Yeah. Because most of them are not played at, uh, uh, at conventions um, and they are, only a few of them have been restaged when they're slightly bigger and many of them are LARPs within LARPs where you play with your own closest friends. So is there a particular reason why you have chosen this way of making your LARP? No. I hate black box. Uh, I really do. I, I think that if you're going to make a LARP in a black box, make it about a black box. I hate that I could do uh, improvisational theater. If uh, So So that's why... So I said on Prolog uh, that I would make, if I would make a black box game again, it would be about a black box. And then I got a kid and forgot all about it. So, but I'm, I'm thinking about trying to translate some of the chamber games and put them together so you can download them and play them. And I think most of the game, the small games, there is not that much um, uh, work to do it yourself. Like that is, I want to design so you can download it and do it. And maybe invite me, because I love to play my own games. Uh, which is sometimes a really, really bad idea. Uh, 
buy me a beer and I will tell you. Uh, some, but most, if you do these small games, it can be so much fun. You have to, you can't step into the little world that you created and play around in it. And I love that. But yeah, I, I have no good answer for that. But it, it like to get that comment gives me a push to actually uh, publish some of the games. But Duo Kim is out there uh, to download and play if you want to. Thank you for coming and listening. <laughs>